Do you struggle to express empathy? Recently, I was on a coaching call with a registrar who asked me, have you got any phrases to help me be more empathic, Owen? This is a frequent question I get. A common misconception that registrars have is thinking that sympathy and empathy are the same thing, but these concepts are completely different. Sympathy is an expression of care and concern for someone. In contrast, empathy is the ability to understand and feel the emotion that somebody is experiencing. When you empathize, you understand the predicaments and perspective of the other person and share the emotions that the person is going through. Empathy brings people closer together emotionally, where sympathy tends to separate people. Sympathy may be appropriate in surface level conversation. Commonly used phrases that I hear registrars say include, I'm sorry to hear that, I'm really sorry about this. Expressing pity is not very helpful to demonstrate empathy. Imagine you're a patient presenting to a doctor with severe abdominal pain, and the doctor tells you, I'm sorry to hear that. Let me give you a working example. Mr. Smith suffers with severe abdominal pain and goes to see a doctor. The doctor takes a history. When Mr. Smith tells about the abdominal pain, the doctor says, I'm sorry to hear that. Can you tell me about this problem? As you can see, this phrase is used merely to acknowledge what the patient is suffering, but it doesn't do enough to show empathic response. I'm sorry to hear that is an overused phrase and merely a transactional exchange between the doctor and the patient. Moreover, the phrase doesn't fulfill essential components to demonstrate empathy. It's helpful to understand human psychology if you want to show empathy in your consultation. Humans feel a need to be heard. Humans want to be understood by others. Humans need to feel that someone can relate to their difficulties. Instead of, I'm sorry to hear that, an empathic response will reflect back the patient that you can almost feel the pain that he's having in his abdomen. So you could say to the patient, I can see this abdominal pain is really bad, Mrs. Smith. This empathic response allows a patient and doctor to connect at a deeper level than I'm sorry to hear that would achieve. If you try stock phrases like this, it might not work. Trying to use stock phrases to demonstrate empathy is unlikely to work in reality. This is because the words that you're using is only one part of the communication. The nonverbal part of the communication is how you communicate it. Your tone of voice is crucial. People easily pick up when somebody is not being genuine in the interaction or is just saying something for the sake of doing it. The way you express yourself is as important, if not more important, than the words you use or the phrases you use. In fact, empathy can be communicated without uttering any words at all. Let me give you another working example. Let's say you know somebody who just lost his dad. You give that person a hug. That proximity and touch communicate to the other person who just lost her dad that you feel the pain and you're with them in this. This is more powerful than uttering some phrases. Let's come back to that GP trainee I was coaching. I asked him, if a family member of yours was suffering with severe abdominal pain, would you need some stock phrases that you have to keep in the back pocket so that you can show empathy? He loathed and realized that he didn't need any stock phrases, but had to convey what he felt at that moment when somebody he cared deeply about is going through a really tough time. I knew that he understood that it was not about the words or phrases, but about connecting with the other person emotionally. If you found this video useful, you might want to watch this video on interpersonal skill. We go in much more detail about what you need to do to boost your interpersonal skills, Mark. Yes, well, look. Mm, maybe he doesn't know. I don't know, doctor. Well, the, the actual recommendation is um, 14 units per week. Now, if you're telling me you're drinking a can of beer every day, that is actually 21 units, which is way above the recommended limit. If you cut down on the alcohol consumption, it will help your energy level. You won't feel as um, tired and you're more likely to sleep well. What do you think about trying to cut down?